even with Bashir Mason gone, still have the stingiest defense in the NEC. And in all the country, top 20, so they, uh, they do a really good job of getting your offense frustrated. One thing the Sharks miss with Terrell Strickland is his outside shooting ability, their second-best three-point shooter coming in. Underneath, Joppa with a nice move inside. Right out of the gate, pick and roll, get the big man moving downhill. They've got a size advantage. They've got to exploit it. That's a great start. And without C.J. Delancey, more of the focus on Joppa in the front court. Fouled out in just 12 minutes a week ago against Albany. Sharks tight on the inside early. Both teams in man-to-man here to start as expected. Joppa getting back down. Keontae Lewis up and under. Great job from Keontae, just knowing where to navigate, keeping his pivot foot on the floor and getting to his spot there. Not a guy that has scored a lot, but again, with these absences for Wagner, he's expected to step up in a big way today. And already a better start. Lewis still trying to get going after being named a Rookie of the Week twice last season. Coming in, four straight games with just two points. He nails his first shot tonight. Ty bumping off, engages the contact, and still puts it in. Wow, I mean, that looked like Malik Monk right there. The way he's <laughs> able to of the week. suspend his body in midair and then the crane arm all the way with for the reverse layup. That was pretty. And now a takeaway. The Sharks running the floor two on one, tied to the cup. And that time he's off the mark. And got a tie up underneath. Tajay Kelton keeps it for Wagner. Not the first time we're going to see a little bit of chippiness mm. there. No extracurriculars, but uh, these two certainly have no law lost for each other see that tie up there after the miss so Wagner keeps the same DNA the same makeup they're shooting more threes than they used to under Bashir Mason but they're the top rebounding team in the NEC and they've got some players even though they are shorthanded tonight the shot from Allen won't go Lewis resets to the outside and Escara makes the shot yeah Javier Escara a really good mid-range game and you know, normally the point guard, the facilitator on this team, tied for the lead with 41 assists, but that's a shot he's been working on over the last year. Yeah, he's been getting better from the outside. 7 of 11 from 3 in the last two for the junior, Javier Escara. Strickland getting a lot of attention. That's a hottie in his second start of the year. Goes to Acker for 3. Eric Acker, the freshman sensation, who really, I think, has the key to unlock this LIU offense. We know what he can do in the ISO game, but, boy, just you got to keep an eye on him at all times. Wagner lost sight of him. That's a lesson they'll learn pretty quickly. Acker made his first two shots in his return last week. Now we get a foul on Ty Strickland. Just a one-game absence for Acker. Didn't play against Mount St. Mary's. Uh, came back against Albany and was the only other Shark in double figures with 10 look at it here just a little handoff and a little bit late on the close out there and Acker made him pay like that low angle shot from the sideline Nick Costi getting in the mix already and there it is the Steinberg Wellness Center classic they run out of room on the side and it's Teron Allen stepping out of bounds for the Seahawks we gotta get some stats on that how many times there's a turnover just from stepping out of bounds because it seems like it happens four or five times again that far corner it happens all the time doesn't really happen along the near side of the floor and we didn't really see that at the Barclays Center Joppa once again he starts two for two again he's a size mismatch that pick and roll game might be LIU's best weapon today and the Sharks start four or five from the field So right now it's Acker on his scare. Eric Acker, one of the top freshmen in the NEC for LIU. Now they get the switch on. Joppa gets beat. Wide open look. And it's down for Julian Brown. And that play made possible by the shiftiness of his scare. And then what a fine, great vision on the cross court pass out to the wing. Wagner coming off a win on Saturday at Manhattan. One by 12. And they ended up five of six from three in the second half. Strickland with the contact and one. And Keontae Lewis is called for the foul. And that's just an experienced college basketball player there, Greg. We saw Ty Strickland take over the first half against Albany because he understands if I can get to the, busket, uh, the bucket and draw contact, 
more likely than not, you're going to get the whistle as well. And he's just so good at finishing through that contact because of that balance that he has in midair. I'm trying to come up with the comp. I'm hoping that by the end of the night I'll have a name, but he just does so much with his ability to score from everywhere. It's amazing watching Ty Strickland here these first couple of weeks for the Sharks. He's been their standout. And now Joppa getting bodied. Lewis with the baby hook. Nice and easy. Yeah, so Joppa's got the size advantage, but Lewis has the meat advantage, if you will, backing him down. And Keontae Lewis already with four. He had four straight games with two. Wide open from the outside. Copa can't put it down. Acker gets to the loose ball. I like how LIU has tried to get everybody involved yep. in the offense here so far. Right now, Ty Strickland with five. Joppa with four. Copa with the step back. Redemption for Copa. How about this? A Wagner defense, top 20 in the country, only allowing 62 points per game, and the Sharks have put up 15 here in the opening five minutes. Sharks blazing hot out of the gate. Six for eight to start. With a couple of threes sprinkled in. Brown again. And that one was defended well. As Sahadi got out to him. And so far, not a whole lot of fast break opportunities as Acker pulls the trigger. And as Sahadi races it down. Copa, same spot, puts it in. Great start, second chance opportunities. Those last two possessions and the Sharks feasting on them early on. So they double the margin. And as Pat said, everybody getting a look. And Copa here again. Nice little handoff. Esahadi directing traffic. Keep that hand up, young man. That's a big triple. Sharks up nine early. The most successful brain surgeries start before you enter the operating room. With a 3D model of your brain, we rehearse your exact procedure from every possible angle so we can deliver the highest survival rates in the country. At NYU Langone, the nation's number one hospital for neurology and neurosurgery. What's up, guys? It's Ty Strickland, graduate guard, LIU men's basketball. Join us. It's February 15th as we host Blue and Gold Night as well as Fan and Alumni Night. Be there. Football is the game of life. And it brings the community together. White, black, boys, girls. Flag, tackle. Football can revive communities. That's why I think you know, football is on the right path community with football is very accepting and loving to people who enjoy the sport. Win or lose, they do it as a family. From our first time out here at the Steinberg Wellness Center, he's Pat Boyle, I'm Greg Caserta, and after leading by as many as eight last week against Albany, the Sharks up nine here as Wagner resets with Council. Council has it in the corner after the initial miss. You see a lot of that, that two-man action between Escara and Council. Fade away, almost. Melvin Council, the junior from Rochester, coming off his second straight double-double in the win at Manhattan. I'd like to see Donald Copeland go Wagner into a 2-3 zone here. Mm. Because, uh, they need to give LIU a different look. The Sharks have done everything right on offense so far. All the way to the cup, it's Acker off the window. They're just getting beat in their assignments right now. Acker's too quick for whoever Wagner has had guarding him, and the off-ball movement that the Sharks have been playing so far has worked wonders. Down the middle, and a lot of contact with Zongo fighting his way through in his first shift. And this is a similar start to what we saw at the Barkley Center from LIU, and you know, again, it pairs repeating. They played a tremendous game against a very good mid-major team for 32 and a half minutes and then everything that could go wrong did go wrong at the end of that game I think you and I were still shaken up after the end of that game last week a 21 to nothing run with about 7 minutes left and the Sharks 7 point lead evaporated 9 ties 7 lead changes and you and I touched on it 
towards the end of the broadcast, the foul trouble was first and foremost, but then the Albany press that they brought back in the second half really threw things out of whack, and the Sharks just were never able to recover. And we'll see if Wagner employs that at some point as well. You know, again, the Sharks have been about as comfortable as you can be setting up their half court offense. Here's Acker high on the three, and Council comes away with the board. Melvin Council, nine of his first 12 games in a Wagner uniform have ended with 10 or more points. Allen goes baseline. Allen, look out below. And no foul. Just a, a shot that he'd like to forget. Yeah, that was good clean defense. And right now, Wagner is trying to get, you can see how their offense operates. It's constant penetration and kick out. Constant penetration and kick out. LIU is doing a good job staying with their men. And they're making life very difficult for the Seahawks. How about that tic-tac-toe to get out of the press between Copa, Esahadi, and Acker? The three of them in tandem to get it across the timeline, but now the Sharks under 10. Andre Washington, his first shift. He gets it back. Number five pulls the trigger and banks it home. We know he can do it. Anyway, it goes in. That's all that matters. I mean, that is nothing but net on the on the shot chart. Doesn't matter that it wasn't the prettiest of shots. It's another three and a massive early lead. The Sharks have taken the fewest threes in the NEC. So far, they've connected on four of six. Seahawks go back to Escara. And the Sharks not only making every shot, but playing some really tight defense. And Wagner's not even trying to go for the second chance opportunities. They immediately are trying to get back on defense, which a little surprised by. Partner, you called it before. There's that 2-3 zone from Donald Copeland. Copa. For the first time, he misses a three, started two for two. Yeah, I think they're going to try to make LIU, you know, pass their way around their defense. Long one, not even close from Zongo. And they did not bring their shooting shoes here in the first uh, nine minutes. Four for 11 now for the Seahawks. Down a couple of touchdowns. Sharks being very patient. Acker and Washington continue to exchange. They're calling out the shot clock. Washington, another long range try, no good. And Council's got another rebound. Council's going to beat the guy tonight for Wagner, and there's two to stop the Sharks run. Yeah, Rod Strickland is fuming right now with his team. Just a, he lost focus for one second. He let a speedy Council flow right by you. Both coaches have called a timeout early, but with 11-17 left in the first, the Sharks are up 12 after an 11-2 run. Sullivan, that is filthy. St. Francis, they win the 2022 Northeast Conference Championship. No problem. He came into the week tied 10th in the NEC in both steals and assists, but the Sharks so far are getting by eight assists on 23 points. And like Pat and I talked about, the shooting right now off the charts for the Sharks, nine of 15, and including four of eight from downtown. Here's a little full court press from Donald Copeland. They've gone into that two, three zone. And again, they're just trying to disrupt LIU's rhythm. Right now it's been very poetic the way they've moved the ball on offense. But like Albany, pretty soft in the pressure. Wagner going back to that zone. Lots of pressure up top. 
utilize Joppa in the middle as the point man. They're using Copa, which isn't a bad strategy. I'm seeing a 1-3-1 one, one here. I think you are. Time running out on the Sharks. It's Washington for three. And the Seahawks have done much better when they reverted to the zone. Yeah, they've settled in. I think you're right. I think it is a 1-3-1 one, one because they're trying to take away the wings, and they did exactly that on that possession. On the inside to Ron Allen. Over the top, kick up the roll. And it's going to be interesting to see how this Wagner team responded because basically the bell rung and they caught a left hook right across the jaw. For a team that is not used to giving up this many points early on, it seems that they're starting to settle in. And we get an offensive foul, Tana Copa. That's caught in the crossfire. Especially in a rivalry game, too. You know you're going to come ready to play, but when a team kind of does something contrary to what you're used to, especially on the stat sheet and how many shots LIU have made early on, some teams get shook by that. You know, we know this Wagner team, it doesn't matter if it's Bashir Mason or Donald Copeland, they've got a gritty DNA. So I'd be surprised if this gap stays as large as it has been, but right now they still have a lot of offensive issues to kind of figure out here in the early going. Interesting to see if the Sharks at any point this season have led in a game by 14. That's as big as it's been. Some find as Scarra untouched. And then Lewis gets to the rebound but can't finish. And with C.J. Delancey out for LIU, Nikola Chop has really got to use every bit of his frame to Kind of just be an enforcer down low and make sure that he grabs those rebounds. Keep an eye on Lewis cheating up in the paint. The back end of that 1-3-1 one, one defense. There's Joppa. And Lewis is there. R.J. Green back on the floor for the Sharks. Good to see him out there after missing some time. And a smart play on the baseline. Julian Brown engages the contact and the foul. Having some issues finding what the largest lead of that, the only win this year against St. and Corpus Christi, but they did win by 15. So I guess I kind of answered your question. <laughs> We're close enough. Fouls now 4 1 for the Sharks. Ty Strickland with two. Wagner's had a bit of an issue at the free throw line. Fewest makes and attempts in the NEC. Currently at 68%. Julian Brown splits the pair. Lead back to 11 for LIU. Brown, a second year player, sophomore from Middletown, New York, amid Essahadi driving the lane. 15 was the largest lead, by the way, so they were a bucket away from tying their largest lead of the season. Six of the seven Sharks in the game outside of Green have scored. And Sahadi the latest. Good pressure from Washington. And Sahadi beat off the dribble. Cancel to the outside. Wide open look. It's Teron Allen making his fourth straight start. And capitalizing on the injuries to Williams and Howell South. Yeah, and especially Ramir Moore, who went down after just three games into this season. They need somebody to hit three-pointers. And Teron Allen shooting 58% this year. He just hasn't taken a lot. Acker to the corner for Washington. And the Seahawks are starting to tighten the screws. LIU has gotten a little three-happy. As Scarra steps in a one. That won't go. And the putback for Allen is good. Got to stop the bleeding. That's been the issue with LIU this year. They were not able to stop the bleeding in the run against Albany. Things have quickly become tight here once again. Allen, a Brooklyn native who transferred to Wagner from Monmouth. Led Wagner with 17 in the win Saturday at Manhattan. So nothing new for him. And the Seahawks defensively starting to make some noise. The Sharks have missed on five of their last six shots. Five straight for the Seahawks have cut LIU's lead down to eight with exactly eight minutes left in the first.
Dear college sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And, and for college sports. sports. Thursday Night Hoops on NEC Front Row. Another year with Pat. I'm Greg Nikosti, our technical director and producer, riding along with us as the Sharks go for their second win of the season. And we have to do a little digging. The last time the Sharks scored a home win against a Division I opponent was their first round win against Sacred Heart in the NEC tournament two years ago. March 2nd, 2022 so a long time coming I'll spare you the number of days since that last win and now we'll see what we've got here for the final eight minutes the Sharks led by 14 it's been cut to eight and right off the bench Ty Strickland's got eight points yeah I can't imagine Ty who picked up two early fouls the only reason he was on the bench He's going to be on the bench too long if he stays out of foul trouble. They need his production tonight. Sharks now 5 of 11 from downtown. As Stara tried the funnel back to Lewis, but it's off the mark. He's not on the same page. I think Keontae wanted to try to get more towards the paint, and that time Ascara threw it back to the low block, which a spot which he vacated. R.J. Green, middle of the floor for the Sharks. Just got the pass off. Here's Acker flying to the cup. Just great recognition that time. And it was like the Red Sea had parted for him, so why not just go and attack, take the high percentage shot. A little kiss off the glass. Eric Acker's got seven. And the Sharks still shooting over 55% here in the first. Off the screen, the left-handed shot is good for Kelton. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of off-ball screen set just outside of the paint to then try to open up either a catch and shoot, but more likely it's going to be a catch and immediate penetration into the paint. Kelton, another great find from Monroe College. Top five in the conference in three-point shooting, top ten in rebounding. He and Melvin Council, teammates at the New York School. And Altana Copa runs into Kelton for the foul know that you and I both enjoy a game where there's not a lot of fouls. It's just the second on Wagner. LIU's only been whistled for four. We've got a nice pace going. This is a textbook first half out of the Caserta Boyle mold. It's exactly how we drew it up. Now we'll see if the Sharks can keep this pressure on leading into halftime. Joppa's got the mismatch. Joppa's got the size and the finish. And if Wagner's not going to collapse on him and double him on the entry pass, go ahead and go with it, big man. He's got the size, and he's had a nice, efficient first half. Six points, four rebounds. One of four Sharks with at least six, and now Kelton called for the travel. Just the fourth giveaway for the Seahawks. And a good response for LIU, too, because things got tight. It got down to eight. Ty Strickland has come back in, and this offense, once again, is starting to gel. Strickland with a nice burst. Again, the Seahawks have nobody downstairs to stop Ty Strickland. You just can't defend that. That athleticism, that balance, and again, you think you have a chance to try to block it, and then now you see it, now you don't. He just goes up and under with the right hand. Largest lead of the night for the Sharks. Kelton. Acker elevates. And leads Copa the spinorama for two. Donald Copeland needs a timeout. His team doesn't have a whole lot of fluidity on offense. And for a team that hasn't been crashing the glass, they get beat on the fast break there. That can't happen. Six straight for the Sharks. The bench. Loud. Kelton. Left open. This time he cashes in. It seems like every shot they make is one that they desperately need. I just wonder how many bullets they have. Copa. 
Sharks starting to navigate this zone. And that's one of the reasons why Strickland pulls it back almost. Joppa. Joppa fighting for it, using his body and drawing the foul. He gets Allen in the air. And a couple of free throws coming for the big man from Serbia. And Keontae Lewis, the biggest guy that's active for the Seahawks tonight at six foot nine. They got a bunch of guys, 6'10", 6'7", that are missing. So there's not a lot of size that you can say, all right, let's just put a body on Joppa down low. They don't have a lot of resources in that department. So we knew coming into the season that the Seahawks would be down two starters from a year ago, both Delani Hunt and Brandon Brown, both leaving the program. But now you throw in no Zaire Williams, which to me is the biggest one, and Ramir Moore, who you talked about, he's been an afterthought. He's missed most of the season at this point. So Donald Copeland playing with less than a full deck, and the results are showing here down 14. And for a team that is not really built to come back from a 14-point deficit, they've got to do this slowly but surely. Every possession has to be crucial. Kelton and Council, the former teammates. Now current teammates on Grimes Hill. Lascara long two. Nice shot from Javier. Yeah, able to slip off of the speedy Ahmad Esahadi. That is fine, though. I think if you're LIU, you take that defensive possession nine times out of ten. If a guy's going to hit a step back 18-footer with two on the shot clock, you know, tip your cap. Right now, it's Kelton and Allen with five apiece for the Seahawks. Acker with a rainbow. And Joppa nearly had the tip back. There's a foul on R.J. Green as he runs into Ascara. Yeah, that might be a little bit soft when you first see it, but that's a smart play that time. He's allowed to stop his momentum, and R.J. Green's got to do his best to avoid him. He did it that time. Final media timeout here in the first half. The Sharks maintain their double-digit lead over the Seahawks. In the blink of an eye, we've arrived at the final media timeout here at the Steinberg Wellness Center in Brooklyn. Greg Caserta, Pat Boyle, and Nick Costi manning our crew tonight as the Sharks look to keep this lead going into the halftime break. When you look at last week's result against Albany, the Sharks had the lead at halftime. And obviously, we saw how things played out, losing by 17 their average margin of defeat over 20 points during this 1-11 and 11 start. The Seahawks, a team to be reckoned with. Third straight year, they've started conference play with the best record in the NEC. They don't play a cupcake schedule either. No, they don't. 6-6 six and six in non-conference. The only team in the conference with a 500 record. Ascara finds his man. The dribble move from Allen. Allen off the glass. Teron Allen with a nice first half. Yeah, that's just such a good move that time. He wanted to catch and shoot three, but the pass went a little bit awry, and then with the defender closing so quickly on him, knew that nice little burst of speed, and he was going to have a chance for a mid-ranger, but to have that touch off the glass was pretty. Allen starting to settle in after transferring from Monmouth. Joppa, tough take, but he makes it work. Well, they adjusted from man-to-man -to, -man to zone early on. Now they've got to adjust with Nikola Joppa because he gets the ball down low on the low block. There's no help for Keontae Lewis or whoever has been defending him. They have to double him. Joppa up to eight points and eight rebounds. Almost 18 minutes into this game. 
High screen from Lewis. He peels back. Council, tough shot. And again, Joppa was there to provide the defense. R.J. Green with the spin move. Yeah, it was a good box out from R.J. Green. He shoved Keontae Lewis out of the way legally, not, you know, not shoved with his hands. Let's not forget R.J. Green made the all-rookie team a year ago. Esahadi, the teardrop? No. Green batting it around. And we get a call on the baseline. It stays with the Sharks. R.J. Green, 12 games in double figures a year ago. Another look at it here. He gets the inbounds pass in. Acker takes it. Acker puts it in. Eric Acker has got nine. And there's just nobody there that you're afraid of going against right now. If you're LIU, they don't have a premier shot blocker right now. Nobody has a block on the, on the game. So keep attacking the cup. Now Lewis also looks a little tired right now, the way he's moving around. Escara, look out. Gets it to the outside. Wide open look, but not a good shot from Allen. And now the Sharks can break out. Acker with Esahadi. Acker, yes! Now between him and Ty Strickland, I'd like to see a circus shot competition on who can hit more of those off-balance layups. Righty going left, lefty going right. Escara, line drive. That's in and out. Boxing out from LIU has been tremendous. Only four offensive rebounds for Wagner, only four second chance points. Not exactly what you predicted based on the previous meetings. Six straight wins head to head for the Seahawks. Nine of the last 11, but they're getting boat raced. Here's Copa up top for three. Just a dominant first half for the Sharks. 45 points against a top 20 defense in the country who only averages 62 allowed. Bravo, Rod Strickland and his team in the first 20 minutes. Lewis on the handoff, Escara. There's a lid on that hoop. And Lewis runs it down. Right now they're best bet on the inside at 6-9. Council knocked down and he fights through with contact. All right, LIU play it smart here. You got the final shot. Shot clock is dead, and they've had an array of weapons that have been able to work. So, just the second bucket for Council, the NEC's fifth leading scorer. And now Lewis goes head on with Green. That is the second foul on Keontae Lewis. That's about the only other thing they can't have happen is for him to get in foul trouble because if he's not protecting the rim. And it's going to be basically four knocks opened up. Not sure if you've caught any glimpses of the bench back home on the broadcast, but we talked about it early. Wagner with just seven available players tonight. They're starting five, plus Julian Brown and Sek Zongo. And now Zongo, the freshman from the Bronx, makes his way in, along with Brown. So the two reserves in for the last 5.8. Zongo from the Patrick School in Union, New Jersey. Where he played for head coach Chris Chavanis. And now one final chance for the Seahawks. Here's Council tripped up at the center court line. R.J. Green takes him down. Not the worst thing for LIU with one more foul to give. No, not at all. And now Wagner's got an inbound from half court with just two seconds left and try to get a good shot here. It's not a bad foul whatsoever. Probably won't have time for a give and go with Council. It's just going to be a pass in and a quick shot as they stack the arc. Well, they tried it, and Green was all over it. RJ Green stays with of them. Well, you distributing the basketball really well. Acker with six helpers, Esahadi with four. And three Sharks in double figures. Led by Acker and Copa with 11. There's Tana. Baseline tries it. And Keontae Lewis is there. Now the Seahawks pushing the pace. And it's denied by Esahadi stepping in front of Allen. Yeah, good defense. He's got strength. He's got speed. And again, he's not out there a lot for his offense. So to see him make those defensive stops, it's exactly what you want. On the inside, Joppa. Showing the range. 
Nice job underneath by Ty Strickland. And a sea of black jerseys, too. Chapa up and down for two. It's a 10-point night for Chapa. Yeah, Mata Sahadi, five assists, and that one again, the penetration and the little drop-off. Wagner, the big man, Lewis, who forced to leave his post. Four Sharks in double figures. Chapa banging with Lewis. But the Sharks had a breakdown. Fortunately, Kelton missed the three. And the frustration growing already for the Seahawks. And these Wagner threes that they have put up tonight have really not looked all that great. Man, we're seeing a lot of darts. Look at this move again. Esahadi splits the double, the little drop off. Nobody's there to pick up Joppa. You know, again, we've chalked a lot of Wagner's shortcomings tonight up to them being undermanned, but I mean, they, they've just had a lot of defensive miscues too you have not seen from this team this season. And you said it, whether Donald Copeland's got seven players available or ten, defensively they're as good as anybody we've seen. Tonight, not so much, but of course, still over 18 minutes to go. Seahawks trying to get back into it from their bench. Joppa, sneaky, sneaky with Copa. And it goes through his hands, just the fourth ally you give away. Yeah, that was a good idea, though. If Joppa was a little bit closer to the elbow, that would have been a perfect baseline cut. It was just a little bit too congested that time. But, I mean, you see LIU, they're so attentive, always looking for the slash to the basket. Scare it to the outside for Allen. And that's a beautiful shot from Teron Allen. And again, that's an LIU defensive possession that you will take nine times out of ten. Uh, Wagner has really had to earn every one of their points tonight. Allen still has a couple of years of eligibility. Made 26 starts at Monmouth last year, where he averaged over eight points per game. A nice job by Essa Adi there, getting out of that double team. If this is last year, he turns that ball over. He has grown a lot. Here's Strickland. And the Sharks missing on their first few tries here at a halftime. Council stripped by Strickland, bats it back in, and makes it happen on his own. Yeah, you would think LIU would have the top 20 defense in the country. Oh, Strickland wrapped up. Lewis gets the hand on him. That's his third, but the act of hands tonight from LIU, they have been relentless with their pressure. They have been relentless with their movement. Look at this. Bang. Knows exactly where that ball is going to have to rise with Council and Benham there. And don't forget that defensively, in terms of their aggression against Albany, they actually won the turnover battle. They forced Albany into 22 turnovers. The problem is that the Sharks also gave it away 20 times. This game has not featured a lot of turnovers from either team. Just back and forth they go. And Strickland nearly getting it off with five seconds coming up. A heartbeat from giving it away there. Here's Copa. And the Sharks start one of six here in the second. Most importantly is that you're taking 25 seconds off the shot clock each possession. On the inside, Allen draws the foul. Because Wagner knows the only way to get back into this game is to have an NBA-like tempo. That's They've it. got to have a shot go up in the first six seconds, six to ten seconds. And it's whether it's a high percentage one or not, I mean, you've got to try to just put up, they've got, what, 31 shots right now? You've got to try to put up 70 shots by the end of this game to have a chance. And I think if you're the Sharks, you don't feel comfortable until that lead is... At least 22 points. 21, certainly the magic number a week ago. And the Great Danes went on that run with about seven minutes left in the second. Turning a seven-point LIU lead into a 17-point loss. And it's been another good night for Teron Allen, up to 11 points. He'd averaged over 11 in his last four. Earning his playing time here. The injuries have thrust him into the starting five, but he's capitalizing. R.J. Green back in there. As Strickland keeps his footing and fades and puts it in. There's not a whole lot you can do right now if you're Wagner on defense other than to double tie Strickland when he gets into the paint like that. But, I mean, I'm asking them to double Nikola Joppa. I'm asking them to double tie Strickland. There's not many guys you can keep doubling. Strickland, after the 27-point game against Albany, has a dozen tonight. As Scarra up top. And another three that won't go. The Seahawks now three for 11. Yeah, it's 
almost every single one of their three-point attempts tonight has not looked comfortable. RJ Green trying to get on the board, not going to happen there. Still the only Shark who hasn't made his way into the score sheet. He's done so much good defensively. Mm -hmm. You want him to get on the board to get his offensive confidence flowing because if he could be a two-way threat for this team, and we saw spurts of it last year. And even prior to the injury this year that kept him out for nearly a month, four games in double figures, and the Sharks' leading rebounder at over six per game. And that's him on Allen. He stays with him in the corner. An extension. Allen backs it out. And there's Green again doubling. Allen has it poked away. And the Seahawks run out of time on the ticker. Surprising the Nazi Teron Allen go up with that. You know, he had the shot clock right in his vision. And he's been their leading scorer. But again, LIU defense, they've been just so good with switching. 4.08 gone by and a timeout in Brooklyn. The Sharks still up 17 on the Seahawks. For everyone from players to parents, football offers unlimited growth with even more to learn. Visit futureforfootball.com to get ahead of the game. Find out where to play, what equipment to use, and get the latest from leagues around the country, including pro tips and parental info from the experts resources make it easier than ever to create your plan and make your play. Just the start of when the games really matter. He's Pat Boyle. I'm Greg Caserta, Nick Costi, and the rest of our crew with you here at the Steinberg Wellness Center where the Sharks are playing for just the second time this season. That last home game at the Barclays Center. And at this point, I don't really know if the Barclays Center really is home court for the Sharks because they have really struggled going down the street. But back home tonight and everything... Looking really solid. They got a blocking foul underneath. And it's going against Julian Brown as he faced up on uh, Ty Strickland. Yeah, let's get another look at that. That was an emphatic blocking call. He hit the floor pretty hard there. Maybe tried to sell a charge, and the officials weren't having any of it. Brown's scoring has gone up with some of these injuries, but tonight only four points off the bench. Copa. Pulls the trigger and puts it in. We're seeing a different side of Tana Copa tonight, leading LIU with 13. Yeah, and he's shooting the pill with confidence, too. I mean, to have the wherewithal there, know that he wants to pull up for an 18-foot you know, long two on some ISO and then hit it, man. And then he might have gotten a piece of that shot from Council driving in. Ty Strickland, automatic. And here's that magic number of 21. That's the lead. And here's the thing. LIU's got four guys in double figures. When you've got everybody involved on offense, it makes everybody want to work that much harder on defense. Perhaps a turning point for this young LIU team. And another three from Julian Brown. That won't go. Brown was shooting it well from the outside. Coppola a little too quick with the feet. Now the Seahawks make another change going back to Tajay Kelton. Yeah, it just doesn't seem like Wagner's had a really much of a concrete offensive plan tonight or whatever they did have. They've kind of abandoned it here uh, early on in this game. I think every possession has to run through Javi Escara like it did in the beginning. They had that 6-0 run which cut the LIU lead to 8 in the first half, but that's really been it. Outside of that two-minute stretch... But no continuity on offense. Brown and Zongo topside. Council waits. Council to Ascara for three. And we get a box out and a foul, believe it or not, on Zongo trying to get to the rebound. 
And there's R.J. Green once again causing issues one way or another. It's a good box out. This was a pretty decent possession here. You got a Scarra slipped out for an open corner three. They just haven't hit him. And I'm not sure what the foul is there. I, I didn't see it. It's the third against Wagner. Opening 5.50 of the second. Tana Copa in the midst of his eighth game in double figures in the first 13. Taj Strickland, foot on the line, yes. And he is just lethal these last two games. He had 20 plus against Albany and tonight now he's got 16 and it just looks effortless. He reminds me a little bit, here's my comp, I finally figured it out. Reminds me of the old LIU standout Joel Hernandez with the way he flies in. Speaking of flying, there's Council drawing the foul for the Seahawks. I like it, that's a good one. It kind of looks like him a little bit, but the way he plays, Joel Hernandez could beat you off the dribble. He had that beautiful mid-range jumper by the end of his final season. And it was during his final season when the Sharks upset Wagner to win the NEC tournament back in 2017. I remember watching that game live. Same. I think I was at my parents' house watching that game on CBS Sportsnet. And at the time, if I remember correctly, the Seahawks had not lost a game at the Spiro Center yeah, all year. That's literally what I was just checking, because I don't, yeah, I think they were unbeaten at home. Wide open, Acker, unbelievable. The Sharks are relentless. Yep, they were 16-0 at home that year. And then the Sharks beat them in their final home game of the season. Yeah, Joel that night, 32 points. Coming back the other way, Council having a tough time getting going here. He's trying, he's really trying to shoot Wagner back into it. And that one waved off, it's on the floor with once again, Ty Strickland engaging for LIU. What do you have about 16 windows open? How many are we up to here? Approaching 20. I can go to anything at the snap of a finger. You wanted, you wanted Wagner's home record? For you had it. 17, I had it within 10 seconds. Pat, don't call me Johnny on the spot, Boyle. It's the power of the internet, my man. Wi-Fi here, tremendous. Unlike the Barclays Center. Oh, thank goodness we had somebody who was working there that slot us the goods, otherwise we would have been on an island. We needed a chisel and a hammer to get into the Wi-Fi at Barclays. I would have been using LTE, man. My data bill would have been through the roof. Those costs aren't oh, oh, no. Both number 10 squaring up right now. Teron Allen and RJ Green. Ty Strickland having his way again. I think we got a technical foul on R.J. Green. He was getting warned before that inbounds play. Again, he and Allen were jawing at the top of the key, and I think they just nailed R.J. Green with a technical foul. I mean, I think LIU's starting to chirp a little bit now. This is not a position they have been in too often against this team. Yeah. But, you know... You can say one thing, you can point to all the stats you want. Wagner shooting is 36% from the field, LIU shooting 55%. The Sharks have only turned it over four times. They've dominated the rebounding. But within all those things, sometimes this game, Greg, just comes down to who really wants it more. And the Sharks have certainly wanted to win this game a whole lot more than Wagner. And I know that maybe sounds cliched when you say it, but you watch this game unfold tonight. LIU has been a step quicker to Wagner in every aspect of the game. When you look at the start of Rod Strickland's time here, there have been 41 games played and 37 losses, including two against Wagner a year ago. So the frustration is there. Even though the names and the faces are different, the rivalry is still there. Strickland has to get back into the play as Scarra peels it 
and puts it in. And Scarra's been trying those threes. He finally hits his longest one. And at least for now, Wagner's got something to hang its hat on. Yeah, just one of five from deep, but I mean, they're, you know, you're essentially talking about Wagner needing a three or an easy two almost every possession here. RJ Green up and denied. Because there's really nothing that this game has told us to think that LIU is not going to hit 75, 80 points. So for Wagner to get there, it would take an avalanche of threes to go in. Abazango called for the foul. Believe it or not, that's number six on the Seahawks. Yet only playing with seven players. Nobody has more than three. Abazango off for Keontae Lewis. So R.J. Green's got himself on the score sheet now. So every Shark has scored. Four of them in double figures. I think that's that's the most impressive. Yep. Job with that double-double. And then the rebounding, which was such a problem last week. Minus 18 against Albany. Tonight the Sharks are plus 11 on the glass. So normally you can find fault in something. Tonight there's been nothing. Everything has been... Just fine for the Sharks. Julian Brown whips the pass to Lewis. Keontae Lewis goes down after making the shot. And he went down quickly as he grabs that right leg. That is the absolute last thing that Wagner can afford to have. Seven available players tonight, and they might be down to six after this. He went down very quickly, and you heard the grunts from Julian Brown, who knew that something was up. We'll get another look at it here. Lewis goes up, and then the right leg, when he did the split, getting worked on right now. Hopefully he'll be able to walk off under his own power. And after the N1, we get a stoppage. 11.48 to go, LIU leading Wagner by 21. Dear college sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And for the college sports. So Wagner still huddled up. The good news is that the player down, Keontae Lewis, looks like just a cramp in his right leg. He's been guzzling down water while getting his right leg worked on. But like Pat said, a team that's only got seven available players right now down to six. I can't say I've cramped up too much in my life, but last time it happened, it was not pleasant. No. No, it's not a great feeling. You get them as you get older. <laughs> so you're saying it's only going to get worse for Keontae Lewis, who right now is being helped to his feet. It's only going to get worse for all of us. That's right. <laughs> Wagner always travels well from Staten Island, so the fans give him a nice hand, but just having a tough time putting any pressure on that right leg. Yeah, the way it's just kind of locked up. Yeah. I, I don't... I, I don't think uh, Donald Copeland should be too concerned, but with this game out of hand already, it might be best to kind of just let him ride this one out, get to do some more stretching, continue to get some fluids into him. It means more Sek Zongo, the freshman, getting an extended look now. And they allow Allen to take the free throw. How does that work? Allen gets the point, right? He gets the free throw point? Yes. As the substitute shooter? Correct. Regardless of the outcome, Seahawks down 20. Justin Steele into the game for the first time. Surprising to see him come on so late. 
Joppa tapping that three off the mark from Copa. And now Ascara can't leave him alone. But it has not been his night. Only one three has gone down for Javier. And a good box out by Ty Strickland, too. So you, you see how much this game means to Ty. He wants to win this game just as much as I'm sure Rod does and everybody else on this roster. But up 20, that was a great box out. There's Acker giving it away. Breakout with Brown. Brown doesn't get the roll. But fortunately, Allen's there to clean it up. And then we're going to see... I thought we were going to see a full court press. Coach Copeland's Here it comes. instructing his players, but that was pretty soft. Good to see Jason Steele out there again, just his first shift of the night. He's played 31 minutes in back to back games, but tonight, relegated to mostly watching. Copa. And he's got to make that one wide open look as Scara three on two, and the Sharks got back. They're not even trying to go against Nicola Choppa nope. right now. Ascara spinning every which way, and that does the charm. And there's the timeout from Rod Strickland after a 7-0 Wagner run. So things just getting a little sweaty, really, for the first time in the last hour of real time here for LIU. So... I would expect Rod Strickland to go back to his starting rotation now and coming out of here and really try to put this game on ice. Quick timeout on the floor. Just over 10 minutes left in regulation with LIU's lead over Wagner down to 16. Hi again, everybody. I'm Paul Dottino with the NEC Notebook delivered to you by WB Mason. Sacred Hearts, Nico Gallet and Joey Riley anchor the preseason men's All-NEC team. The rest of the squad is Ansley Almanor of FDU, Kellen Amos of Central Connecticut, and Stonehill's Max Zagorowski. The Pioneers are picked to win the title. The Pioneers got seven first-place votes, followed by Central Connecticut, then FDU with one vote apiece to round out the top three. A high five to Chicago State, which joins the NEC in July on the heels of a men's up set over number 25 Northwestern. On the women's side, Sacred Hearts Nasira Pryor and Sajeda Bonner lead the preseason All-NEC squad. They're joined by Merrimack's Jamie DeCesare and Kaylee Thomas, as well as Central's Belle Lanfer. The Pioneers are your unanimous selection to grab the women's crown after winning last season's NEC tournament. They are followed in the top three by Merrimack and Wagner. Catch free live conference action on NECfrontrow.com. Remember to follow the season on Twitter at NEC Sports and on the web at northeastconference.org. Just over 10 minutes remaining in the second half. LIU up 16. I got a Pap Royal scoreboard for you. Oh my goodness, our first one of the new season. How about this? We had the 11 a.m. tip in Fairfield today. Sacred Heart beat St. Francis U 79 67. Right now, two other live games. Merrimack leads FDU 40 to 36, in which the really good one, two teams that are. Very evenly matched, and then Central Connecticut pulling away from Stonehill on the road to lead 60 to 49. And that is our first Pat Boyle scoreboard of 2024. Plenty more to come. I'm longing for the ones where we got every team in conference in action. RJ Green called for the travel, and Allen had the hands. And I remember some games from years past when there'd be a technical foul that might change the tenor of a game or the course. Let me wonder if that R.J. Green technical foul has turned things around for the Seahawks. Deontay Lewis still being worked on at the end of the bench. In the meantime, Teron Allen is starting to take over. Well, they've certainly played with the most energy they have all night, that's for certain. So whether it was the R.J. Green technical or them rallying around their wounded brother right now, Keontae Lewis, who's still on the bench getting that leg worked out, this is the best stretch for Oh team. boy, now a turnover. Tough shift for Green. Council, and one! What a finish! That one could end up on TV tonight. All right, that is a no look, falling down in midair layup with the contact. My goodness, and this is what Wagner hasn't done all night. They haven't gotten these turnovers. So really, this is the first fast break opportunity they've had, and look at that. Over the shoulder, no look with the foul. My goodness, what a play from Council. 11 straight for the Seahawks, part of a 16-2 run. 
And R.J. Green heads off with his fourth foul. This is something, isn't it? If I'm LIU, 25 seconds minimum is coming off this shot clock here. And then I'm going to Nikola Joppa. They haven't gotten him involved in the offense really in this second half, or at least in the last six minutes. Here you go, pick and roll game. Hacker to the outside. Copa better be sure. There's Joppa called for the push off. And the Seahawks can cut it to inside of 10 points. And it was a good call. Both hands were extended. The LIU fans don't like it, but here's another look. Yep, right in the back. That's it. And starting to get restless. They've seen this movie play out before. Just a week ago, right around this time, Albany went on a 21-0 run. Ty Strickland with the takeaway. And the foul from Allen going down to the floor. There you go. Three steals for Ty Strickland. He has been a ball hawk defensively. And he's got another 18 points tonight. Look at this. Just, I'm not letting you get any easy passes off. And now with Wagner over the limit, Ty's got a chance to get 20. So we talked about Ty, 10th in the conference in scoring, just under 13 per game, but he's top five in minutes, and also top five in steals per game, just over two per, so three more tonight. For the grad student who got his bachelor's degree from Temple. One and done here in Brooklyn, but so far this one is one to remember. Especially these last two games. Eric Acker's their leading scorer on the season, but Ty Strickland has had a different type of intensity about himself these last two games. And there's your 20. Ending that long run for the Seahawks. Still trailing 13, but this is much more of a game now than it was just a few moments ago. Four Seahawks have one three-pointer made tonight. That's it. Council works inside. Chapa with the denial. Huge rejection, and there it is. Anytime LIU's had to answer the bell tonight, they have. Albeit after a long Wagner run, but Strickland pulls up. Can't get the roll. The rebound for Zongo. That was so why that was that huge cushion was so important for them. Well, Sierra kept his footing, pops the shot, and there's another push off. And this time, I think they got Ty Strickland. I think they did. See if this was uh, some really good acting on the part of Zongo or if it was legit. But he went flying in after that rebound. Keep an eye on 13 and white. Strickland at the logo. Yeah, there's enough of a push there. Especially as the shot was going up. Job by Nick Costi. I mean, it's it's kind of this point where we're calling for replays, and he's got them dialed up. So the foul on Ty Strickland, his third, and his third game with at least 20 points. 27 against Albany. 21 in the Sharks' only win over Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Acker quiet in the second. The middle is closing up. Wagner's defense really pinching. Mascara with room, shovels to the outside. And the three from Council. Oh, this place would have gotten really uh -huh. tight if that one would have went down. That's the thing. They, they had a couple of threes in the first half that kept them within striking distance because LIU jumped out to a double-digit lead almost instantly. But they haven't had the big three here in the second half. Tripling through the screen. This is what Pat wanted, LIU taking time off. Five to shoot. Ty throws it up. Defended nicely by Zongo. Council splits to the corner. They need a three. They got a three. Julian Brown cuts it to eight. Need a timeout. Need a timeout. Just got to readjust here. Rod Strickland, I think, needs to continue to deliver that message, that point of emphasis of belief, of self-belief, of self-assuredness. And everything, obviously, in the X's and O's that they've done so well. they got to get back to that. In a span of six minutes, a 26-point lead has been shrunk to eight. Copa. Nope. And all the shots that were going down aren't. Look at Council flying. Again, it's Brown. Yes! It's happening again. 
Cue the dramatic organ music. The Seahawks are within five. 25 to four run, and look at this, the penetration, the kick out. That time an overcommitment from Acker and Brown makes him pay. Wow, this Wagner team looked down and out, but here they are. It's a five point game, and we still got plenty of time left in Brooklyn. Tension and pressure mounting inside the Steinberg Wellness Center. And just over six minutes, Wagner has gone from down 26 to down five. And after failing to connect on three pointers all night, Julian Brown has nailed the last two. And like Pat said before we went to break, a long run for the Seahawks has this very much a game. This zone is working the best that it has all game. They're cutting off all the lanes of penetration. Attack the pants. Ty Strickland can't get it to the cup. And the Sharks are running out of time on the 30, and it's not by choice. Mascara works his way to the top. Melvin Council. Yes! One more! This is unbelievable. You mentioned it. Whether it was the R.J. Green technical foul or things got chippy, really for the first time, you know, you don't want to wake a sleeping bear. Or was it the injury to Keontae Lewis, who, as I'm going nuts, has still not returned? Well, one of those two things has woken this Wagner team up. Because in the break, I, I'm not afraid to say it, we said this looks like this team never got off the bus. Nope. They were down 60 to 34. And since those two events, one of those two has spurred this team back to life. Boy, have they revved the engines up. That missed free throw keeps it at a three-point game. But the run is 10 straight for the Seahawks. 27 to six. And yes, the margin there is 21. That 21 number keeps popping up. It's Erie, Copa, short on the three. Seahawks get bodies to the rebound. And there's a lid right now on the LIU bucket. As Scarra left open, almost tied it up. Council spinning, not a great selection. No, and that was one of the few bad possessions they've had over this run. It's the only time they've really pressed. There is still a lot of time left. Everything for LIU has been on the outside. Got to get job on the pick. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So Ty picks. He's, he's not rolling. There's no roll. Again, the Sharks coming up on five to shoot. Strickland around the screen as Kara gets to him. Strickland falling away, throws it up. And let's see, that's a shot clock violation. One ref's got a foul, the other's got a yep, shot clock you're violation. Right. They gotta get on the same page here. And ultimately, gotta take a look at this. They're gonna have a look. For now, the call's gonna be shot clock violation. Rob Strickland saying, let's go to the monitor, but I don't know if that's a reviewable play. Tough to tell because I don't think the, the, the sensor went off on the backboard. Mm. Well, a rare giveaway tonight for the Sharks. And once again, the Seahawks looking for a three to tie it up. Allen with the left. 
And the Seahawks have had a couple of cracks here to get it closer. That's fine. The way they've played defense right now has been what we're accustomed to seeing this year from a team that is in the top 20 in scoring defense. Lob pass on the inside, a foul on Zongo. Zongo and Brown, the only two reserves available tonight. They've come up very big in this second half. And Joppa, who's been quiet, is at the line where he's 0 for 2. And he was 57% on the season coming into this, 8 out of 14, so he's exactly at 50%. Second double-double of the season and a big first free throw. Every point right now for LIU's got to feel like another weight coming off their shoulder just to get a little bit of cushion back if they can get it. That scoreless drought took nearly five minutes before those two free throws from the big Serbian. Now after Wagner blitzed LIU during that run, they've gone a little cold offensively. How can they heat it back up? Is it going to be Escara? Is it going to be looking for Brown on the three? Escara to the cup, and it was poked out by Joppa. Wow. And I, yeah, I mean, if it was poked out, it would have been goaltending. So I thought I, he put his hand through the net. Either way, the refs didn't call it. I think Council just kind of missed it. Opportunity there. Joppa to the corner for Copa. Can they finally cash in? And the answer is no. R.J. Green, hustle play, but the Sharks run out of room with Acker. And R.J. Green, along with Ty Strickland, both out there skating with four fouls. And with that, we've arrived at the final media timeout. 3.28 to go. And our first big finish of the season coming up right after this. As FDU wins it. Merrimack Warriors are your 2023 State Basketball Champions. Lofted far down the left field line. It is gone. A three-run homer. Seabers in lead five runs away with it. The Sacred Heart Pioneers are Northeast Conference Women's Basketball Champions. We are excited beyond belief to welcome the Lemoyne Dolphins into the NEC family. Always with her head on a swivel. Sullivan, that is filthy. St. Francis, they win the 2022 Northeast Conference Championship. Haven't had a tight one like this in quite some time here at the Steinberg Wellness Center where the Sharks have not beaten a Division I opponent since the NEC quarterfinals from two years ago. They beat Sacred Heart and have since gone on a tear of coming up short. Their lone D1 win last year was coincidentally against Sacred Heart, but that game on the road. And now tonight the Sharks going for their first win in their last seven tries against the Seahawks, who have won nine of the last 11 meetings. Council flies in for two. Yeah, their leading score, I mean, right now, it's just, I'm going to will my way to the bucket, and if I can get it to go, that's great. So that's a fantastic finish off the glass. Their best possessions in this second half have been with Council guarding the point. Ascara has been more of the number two, and that pass, oh boy, that was close. Last touch by Wagner. LIU had just two turnovers at the half. We've got seven here in the second half. Seahawks have extracted a couple in the last six minutes. Ty Strickland needs to be careful. Four fouls put on the line, and that might be the worst shot we've seen him take in two games. Yeah, he had a double clutch because it was a good closeout. There he is again, the magic man, Melvin Council, with back-to-back -back buckets. Yeah, because you got Strickland with four fouls, R.J. Green with four fouls. Those guys don't want to foul out, and you know, somebody else has got to step in front right there and put a body on Council. Wagner has never led in this game. Acker, not there. And in the middle, it's Zongo with a huge rebound. Escara driving. That's the lead for the Seahawks. 26-point lead for the Sharks. 
has up and vanished in the Thursday night Brooklyn air. And Estera just attacking. That's it. It's just for Wagner. It's been getting downhill and getting to the bucket. And when the shot goes up, there hasn't really been a, a true closeout. There hasn't been a contesting of the shot from LIU. And this is remarkable. This is shell shock to see this happen twice in the span of seven days. Since the 12.45 mark of this second half, the Seahawks have gone on a 33-6 run. They were down 26 points in the second half. They now lead by one with just over two to play, and the Sharks called their last timeout. And now how do you respond if you're LIU? They didn't respond well against Albany, and they have not responded here over the last nine minutes, 11 minutes now. Ty Strickland has tried to work his mid-range magic, but Wagner's closeouts have been the best we've seen all night. Nicola Chapa, the pick-and-roll game that they had working with him in the first half, they haven't really utilized it, and even then he hasn't been rolling effectively, especially without Keontae Lewis not in the game. I think the answer right now is got to be get it down to Joppa. If they double-team yep. him in the post, then you kick it out, and you trust your shooters. The, the problem is LIU's one of eight from deep here in the second half. So the Seahawks have gone to that zone. It's obviously been working wonders the last few minutes, and I guess the focal point has been deny the entry to Joppa because he's been taken out of the equation. He only has four points in this second half. Copa only has two. And he's 0 for 5 from deep in the second half. He hit three in the first half. Both of them stuck in the mud. LIU down for the first time. There's the entry. Exactly what Pat drew up, and sure enough, it's a travel. Joppa was one-on-one, -on -one, but he lost his footing backing in. And when you've got a million thoughts racing through your mind, when the pressure has been stacked upon you after seeing a huge lead like this vanish, it's, it's all those things adding up that just cause those little miscues that weren't there in the first half. This could be... Big shots of the bow against LIU. Yeah, Wagner knows the position they're in. Here's Brown. Brown hit those two big threes earlier. That time he's off the mark. They were looking to put him on the canvas there with that shot. Not so fast. Who is it going to be for LIU? Acker's only got three in the second. Here's Strickland. Thought about a pop. Instead, the Sharks keep it on the outside. That's the look. Puts it up and puts it in. Ty Strickland. There it is. That's the biggest shot of the game right there for LIU. And they were daring Ty Strickland to shoot it. And again, with the pressure on the line after seeing a big lead evaporate, Ty Strickland not afraid of the big moment. That's a huge make. His second triple gives him a game-high 23. And it brings us to the timeout as we get another look at this huge shot from the grad student. Yeah, at that time, I don't know if they just dared him to shoot or if that was just a bad zone breakdown. They have been so good, but that was a very slow rotational cover there. Watch this. Nascara goes, and nobody ever comes nope. back. Brown never came back in time. And that's a wide-open three at the worst time to allow it. I think, like you said, he passed up the first look. They thought he's not going to shoot a second time, and sure enough, he did. And that's the biggest shot of the night right now for LIU. That was their first make in their last 12 shots. I feel like we're due for OT here. Well, in this conference, it happens quite a bit. We've called our share of overtime games together. And if you're Wagner now, though, it's been... Council. It's been Melvin Council getting to the bucket, getting down the hill. It's been a little Javier Escara as well, as well, by the way. And Escara had nine assists. He's one away from a double-double. We haven't seen a ton of Teron Allen in this second half. He was the guy carrying the torch for them in the first half. So if I am Coach Copeland, I'm drawing up Council, getting him to the bucket, and just trust that he's either going to get to the free throw line or he's going to hit it. Two timeouts remaining for the Seahawks. The Sharks are out of timeouts. Mascara's pass knocked out by Acker with 14 to shoot. LIU in man-to-man -man defense. I am opening up an off-ball screen for Melvin Castle to get the ball in his hands, ideally right inside the perimeter where he can just attack. Got to get the ball in. 
Council looking for an option. Working on Strickland. Strickland with four fouls. Council over the top. Strickland lost them. And there's Council missing from point blank. And the Sharks dodge a bullet. That could have tied the game at 69. Yeah, huge miss. And Wagner right now, you don't foul. Nine second difference, game clock and shot clock. LIU can deliver a knockout blow though here with a bucket. Sharks can take it down to nine seconds. Strickland trying everything. Almost gave it away, loose ball. Sharks still have it, three to shoot. Strickland puts it up and that does not get to the rim. Last chance for the Seahawks. They got two timeouts. Council barrels in, it's a block. Oh boy. And Ty Strickland has just fouled out with four seconds remaining. Wow. Two timeouts. Coach Copeland doesn't call it. He lets Council go like a battering ram right through. And they get Ty Strickland for a blocking foul. Here's another look at it. That could have gone either way. And as you're directing it to me here, Greg, this is one and one. So he has got to hit the first. Ideally, he's got to hit both, but... Man, oh man. Elvin Council tonight, three for four at the line. What a night for Ty Strickland. 23 points, three rebounds, three steals, but it's going to end four seconds, maybe more, early. For the season, Council 76%. Doesn't get it. Rebound, LIU. It's RJ Green in the fray. And Council can't believe it. A couple of made free throws here for LIU. It would all but ensure they end this losing streak. And that was, I think that was just pure nerves. I mean, he knew that wasn't good as soon as it left his hands. This place got definitely loud in a heartbeat and now it's up to RJ Green in a one and one he's two for four at the line RJ Green on the season 63 percent he's taken the second most free throws on the team this year and if I am Donald Copeland I would be taking a timeout maybe to try to ice the young man knowing that he's got another one in his pocket that's exactly what he's going to do good call by you that's one of two timeouts left for Donald Copeland who's got one more with 2.2 free throws coming or at least one for RJ Green who in his return to action tonight has given the Sharks 23 minutes off the bench six rebounds four assists and both points coming at the line how about this, Keontae Lewis getting ready to check in? Uh, he's giving it his all. I think he is purely in there to try to grab a rebound if there is a miss. And if they do secure a rebound, Donald Copeland's calling his final timeout and Keontae Lewis would probably head back off the floor. But I mean, this is a warrior-like performance just for him to come on. Yeah. I mean, he needed a lot of time just to get up on his feet and he needed assistance getting to the bench. And here he is with the game on the line back on the floor. But it would be for moot if R.J. Green knocks these both down. Deontay Lewis delivering his Willis Reed moment. They had three-tenths of a second back to make a 2.5. A game in which LIU led by 26 with just under 13 minutes to go. Oh boy, there's the rebound. And sure enough, it fell right into the arms of Keontae Lewis. Point seven taken off the clock. Man. Wagner basketball with a three to win it. Wagner with a chance to tie. LIU with a chance to put the game on ice. And we saw some bad free throws there. Both of them were way off the mark. The one and one from Council. And Greens was way wide to the left. Big decision here for Donald Copeland. You've got you've got most of the momentum on your side after of course you do after trailing by 26. Down these last two, three minutes, it's kind of been back and forth, but do you try, do you trust your team, do you trust the momentum in going to overtime and trying to go for a two? Or on the road, do you play for the win and try to shoot a three here? I, I think you, you draw a place for both and you see which one looks better out of the inbound. 
Either team has a timeout, so no. if this doesn't work, you got to get the ball in no matter what. This is what we like to call self-policing down on the floor. The coaches are taken out of the equation without any timeouts. I think ideally I'm going right back to Melvin Council. I'm going off-ball screen to try to get him curling around inbound. He catches it ideally. Catch shoot up top. Right around the elbow, and he can go right to the cup and try to lay it in with man, you know, oh man. in two seconds. And the Sharks can't foul because Wagner's in the double bonus. Oh, they don't get the advancement though, Greg. So they've got a prayer and a quick heave. I forgot. That's what they've got. they got to go the full length of the floor here. Almost everybody's stacked up in the backcourt. Allen the inbounder, guarded by Joppa. No timeouts for Wagner. Allen looking, looking, running out of time, fires it in. Escara lost it. Escara stepped out, shot waved off, and the Sharks hang on for the win.